Additional dwelling unit, or ADU, has become a very popular term recently. With the cost of housing rapidly increasing, investors and homeowners alike are trying to find a solution to create more ROI or just livability on their properties. The garage apartment style ADU here in Lake Nona's Laureate Park, as well as some other parts of Orlando, Florida, have become quite popular for a number of reasons. Besides people using these for multi-generational purposes, some of these garage apartments are getting upwards of $2,000 a month in rent, which can really help the ROI of a property, especially when you rent out both the front house and the main house together. But what if you have an existing garage and you wanna build an ADU on top of it? Well, in today's video, you get to find out all about how that's done. We're gonna hear from Adam Talbot from Talbot Custom Homes for his Parade of Homes entry on top of a three-car garage that he built here in Laureate Park, Lake Nona. Oh, and by the way, we answered a lot of the questions you might have down in the description about ADUs. Can you build them? What are the restrictions? So be sure and check that out in the description below. So follow along with us today as we tour this brand new garage apartment that's just been built and hear about all the custom details that went into this property from Talbot Custom Homes. Garage apartments in Lake Nona's Loria Park. Have you ever wondered what it takes to build one of these things? That's right, I've got the builder here, Adam J. Talbot from Talbot Custom Homes, and he's gonna show us what really goes into building one of these. So for those of you that don't know, here in Lake Nona's Laureate Park, some of the homes have a rear garage apartment above the three-car garage, as you see here, where you can have a separate one bedroom, one bath, washer dryer. Yeah, everything, everything is included. We actually did a pool bath on this one as well. And you can rent them out separately, but you still just pay one set of taxes and one set of HOA. That's right. You're gonna learn about the ability to build one of these garage apartments above a rear garage property not just in Laurier Park but some other places Orlando can do this too right yeah absolutely so we got Baldwin Park as well as celebration we're looking at other areas that have the right impervious ratio to make that happen because that multi-generational living having a place for the parents or an older child going to college but still have that separation this is a really great way to either have an additional source of income or have your family member in-law and really spruce it up kind of like we did this one okay so we're gonna give you a quick tour first and then we'll talk about the challenges you had to endure to do this project. Yeah, there were a few. <laughs> yeah, ready, let's go. All right, so Adam, before we go upstairs and see the tour, yep. tell us kind of start to finish, how did you guys conceptualize this project and get going? Did you have to tear anything down first? So yeah, so we had to rip the roof off, but the very first part of it was design. So we do demo and then we actually added seven more feet onto the apartment as you can see. So if you look to where this new door is, there's actually a whole bathroom and under storage space in there. Now, you also need to get HOA approval for something like this. Yeah, so the initial process is you get your drawings done. We submit it to the HOA. That can take anywhere from 15 to 45 days, depending on where their cycle's at. And after that's done, usually I haven't been disapproved for one of these yet, and we've done about 10 or 11 that are in process. So the entire pre-construction process is probably about four to five months total, sometimes a little less. All right, so again, you had the main house, and this is all separated, detached. Not all of the garage apartments in Laureate are fully detached. Some of them are closer to the main house, but this one has a very nice lot going with some, some space between. Yeah. You know, they smartly put in a pool bath right here that goes all the way through to under the stairs storage, which I think the, the main house uh, resident could enjoy that as well. Yeah, and really it's meant for the main house resident too. Of course. So they realize when you know when they're out here, they want to just be able to pop really quickly into the bathroom versus I think their bathrooms are in the front of the house. So you don't have to drag to the kitchen or go into the master bedroom. So it really allows them some flexibility outside and just ease of access during those hot summer months when you just want to be outside. First, show you the garage itself on this side. One of the misconceptions I think people think is that you have to tear down the existing garage first and re-pour the footers, is that right? Yeah, so there's been a lot of talk, especially locally with our Facebook page in Laurier Park and within it, is that we have to actually rip down the whole garage or underpin the footers. We actually haven't come across that one time yet. And so essentially what we do is our engineer, there's a calculation that he makes, and I'm not an engineer, so I can't say yeah or nay to it, so it goes to a professionally certified engineer. And he says, yes, you can, or no, you can't. Uh, we have had one where we had to take off something called a header over a garage and put a new LVL to distribute the weight differently, but that's the only time I've ever had that issue and it was nothing to do with the footers and the cost was commensurate with normal just going straight above. Because they're concrete block and they're on a slab, yeah. you know, I guess if you had to, you'd have to what, jackhammer out and put more steel rebar and more concrete? So if we ever had to underpin them, essentially what we do is we dig down underneath the existing footers and then attach new footers to the old footers. And so if you think about it like a box, so you have a box and then underneath that box, you have some concrete that's poured. 
And then in that poured concrete, you just go underneath it, essentially. And wherever the points that where the most weight from the above is going to be, um, then you'd have to underpin that. But we haven't had that issue yet. Mm -hmm. But that's a potential, maybe on an older home, that might have only had something called like a thickened edge versus an actual footer. You'd have to do that, too. Yeah, what about like older structures like in Thornton Park? where it's uh, grandfathered in for a garage apartment, yeah. but it's like a wood frame garage. That you couldn't put something on top, right? Most likely not, but again, I try never to speak to her, an engineer. Yeah. Um, so I have them come out and actually do a site assessment, and we look through that. It really depends on, we'll dig down the sides and look for how deep the footers are, what the architecture was at the time. Sometimes the city actually has the plans, like very old plans, but they're you know sketched out with somebody from the 1960s sketching out with their hand. But realistically, you want to do kind of full site assessment, and what we would normally do is we would probably reinforce it just in case. Uh -huh. So wherever we knew that load was coming down, we'd probably put um, another footer underneath it, especially for the older homes. Great. Well, let's take a look upstairs. And I see up above here you have some, uh, what is this, bead board detail? What's that called? So it's board and batten. So it's actually my favorite type of siding. Looks better, the best in my opinion, as well as it is the least penetrable of all of them, with the exception of maybe siding. Uh, we never try to do any stucco on the second floor, seeing as it can crack and there's a lot of mo movement in the, in the framing and things like that. So we try to use hardy siding, which is a concrete board. So it's just as good as stucco, it's actually better, but it takes a little more maintenance. So if you see all the seams on the sides, essentially you have to caulk in all the sides everywhere, as well as have a really nice strip edge and flashing above it. So you can see them kind of overlap around every six feet or so, and that means that it's installed correctly. So you come upstairs and right away I can see there's very high ceilings up here. These are 10 foot and you come up to a stackable washer and dryer with built-in shelving right there. And this hallway takes you to the kitchen, but let me show you this bedroom first. It's a huge bedroom with the tray ceiling. I love these floors, tall baseboards. This feels really nice and luxurious. My uh, Boston apartment is probably less spacious than this. Little balcony here, stepping out to the alley. It's a nice design feature they put in. Got the plantation shutters and this walk-in closet with built-in shelving. Now this goes through to the full bathroom with two sinks. The glass shower enclosure and it also go, goes through to the kitchen with more storage here and built-ins that can act as a pantry. But let me take you around the original hallway direction to give you a feel of that layout. So as you pass by this back hall, it opens to a nice size family room and kitchen. You would never believe this all existed on top of a three-car garage. The architect laid this out in a really nice way to take advantage of the natural light. You're perched up on the alley. Some separation so you're not all just in the same room. And check out these cabinets going all the way to the ceiling. Really nice upgrades for more storage. Let's go ahead and hear from the builder on all the details they put into this property. This is really exciting. It's so different because most of the, the builder spec ones, it was either this or that plan, but this is a completely different layout. Talk about how you guys laid this out. Yeah, this is 100% unique to the customer, right? So as we were developing the plan, I showed them a few different options, but it's something called design build, just like you get at a real custom home. It's completely design built. So this is a 100% custom layout. All the options are 100% custom when it comes to what they wanted to pick. Of course, everybody has a budget, but when it comes to the selections, it really is whatever you want. Some of the cool things I'm really proud of that we did in this one particularly are the floors. So these are all LVP or luxury vinyl plank floors throughout the stairs as well. But what we did on the stairs that a lot of builders don't do is we actually added a full tread. And what that means is instead of having that small nosing that can pop off, it actually sits on top of it about six, seven inches. 
and so it'll never come off. That's, we're trying to build things with longevity in mind, right? So these are gonna be either rented out or with you know, your mother-in-law, but we wanna make sure they never have to be really adjusted again. And the ceiling height is excellent. A lot of times you get that floor to 10 foot, which is really nine foot four, <laughs> yeah. uh, but this is a true volume of space. It's probably more like a, 11 foot with this tray right here. Yeah, so that was a really big point of contention when it comes to how I felt about these spaces, right? So we always wanna make them feel big and airy, but you're still limited because it's a rectangle at the end of the day. You wanna make sure, how do you make this space feel grand? Mm -hmm. And I think not only doing this, but the tray ceilings really, really knocked it out of the park. And it was really exciting to see it when it was in framing too, that I was like, wow, this feels really big and it feels even bigger now. And you know, the windows, you have these windows up high. Cool thing about those windows is it was actually a conversation. So they have a pool back there and they didn't know who they were gonna run out to. We kept them about six feet height so that people couldn't just look in them all day. It's a privacy concern. Yeah, you know, when you're living in close proximity like we do in these Laureate Park homes, you're absolutely right. You want to think about those sight lines to the main house. Exactly. And that was smart how they did that. They, did, they definitely spent some money in this kitchen, you can see. Yeah, and so they're full plywood boxes, which are much sturdier than the furniture board, particle board that you see in most of the builder's homes. And that's just my standard, right? So the operas aren't my standard, but the, the rest of the kitchen without that would be the standard. One thing I love though that we have is this pantry cabinet. One cool thing we did is we added a pantry cabinet and some stackables above because we are at a, at a space premium, right? So all of these roll out from top to bottom. There's a ton of space. We added one in the bottom that was a little further away for small appliances, um, tall things, vinegar bottles, things like that. So we're really trying to think about the actual use versus just putting a drywall pantry with some ventilated shelving. Oh, another question about the, the boring stuff, right? Did you have to do a separate electric meter or is that still part of the main house? So we actually did a separate electric meter on this one um, and you can do it as part of the main house, but the cost is pretty much the same, if not a little more to add it to the main house. So that way you do have a separation for your AC bill. Your water meter though is the same. Essentially, you're able to say, you wouldn't really want to want to have the same electrical meter, especially if it's a renter, they could stick it at 63 and you'd, yeah. you'd end up paying for that, right? But in this one, they'll pay for everything themselves. It's on the side over here, um, separate AC, separate meter. The only thing that's combined is sewer and water. Right, because a lot of times these are offered as utilities included. Yes. But then you got to wonder how much of that is being used by this tenant versus the main house. So. Yeah. That's great that you can add that as you're building. And then they also run that fiber optic internet to the apartment as well. Yeah, so we actually have to come off the main house. That's one of the trickier things actually out of everything else, that was probably the trickiest thing. So we come out of the main house and drop it down in conduit on the side of the home and, and then bury it underneath the ground and then pop it back up in here. Each one will have a separate, on the Wi-Fi. you'll have like a separate address for it, but it'll come from the same modem. Well, that's part of li life in Laureate Park. Yeah. We, we have that fiber optic one gigabit internet here. Yes. So This is a quartz countertop and quartz countertops are my standard um, that we, we use. Appliance wise, this is one of the cooler ones that we did too. So we actually have an indoor microwave. It opens up automatically. Our customer picked a lot of the lighting. So the chandelier in the hallway that you saw when you first come into the stairs and this pendant light, the fans they picked. And I really love that we do this because I'm a Lori Park resident myself. Adam doesn't just build garage apartments. He builds custom homes. Yeah. So having those showrooms to show people, this being one of them. Right. And you said a lot of during this video that much of this was your standard package. So yeah. that's excellent for buyers or people renovating to see and kind of copy from. Cool thing about this room though is we actually have the attic access in here. And so what's pretty neat is we actually have spray foam walls everywhere. I talked to some of my friends that do the ICF homes. So basically it's so tight, we almost needed a new filtration system. It's on like a, a three to seven basis. Um, we're at 3.4, which is pretty awesome. We have like two or three different custom homes under contract that's gonna be starting at the end of the year. Some are in Geneva, one's in Orlando. We're looking out towards the winter garden area. Size wise, this is a one bedroom, but the fit and finish and the quality is truly evident as we walk through. And I can't wait to see more examples of this get built in our neighborhood, yeah. Laureate Park. Where can they find more of your work online? TalbotCustomHomes.com. We actually have explanations about accessory dwelling units and how much they cost. And I kind of give roundabout prices for everything I'm doing now. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of homeowners in this neighborhood that want to get their eyeballs inside this garage apartment, but now they got to see it thanks to the video. So thank yes. you for allowing us. Thanks to the homeowner. So we actually had some really amazing partners. We have um, AJ, um, he does our trim, just an amazing guy 
and all of the trades information is actually going to start flowing into my website too, just so they and people understand who my trade partners are. Mm -hmm. We worked with Barry Neal for this as well. We did all the floors, all the countertops, cabinets, everything like that. Well, thanks again for giving us a tour today, and we look forward to more Parada Homes tours this 2023 season. Thanks again, Adam. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate you.